Luton fans. Kasky. Heath. Douglas McCartney's in now. 2 1. We should do the same for bars. Good play from Cole, from Benton, and here's Campbell. Oh, the chance, he gets it down to one. And he made no mistake that time. But here's the free kick. McCartney. Douglas jumps. Kasky. 4-2. Johnny Jellison is onside as McCartney runs. McCartney has pace. McCartney for Glen Torren. Oh, this could go in. It's gone in for Gary McCartney. There was little pace on the ball, but does it matter? It's his 35th goal of the season. His seventh against Linfield. 30 minutes gone and Linfield. And this is Campbell. Raymond Campbell, Stephen Douglas goes in the run, this is Campbell, can he go all the way, what a run by Raymond Campbell, Maradona like, oh he's done it, he's done it Raymond Campbell, that was a brilliant individual goal, what a run, reminiscent of the great Argentinian himself, he beat the entire defence, I mean it looked as if it might come to nothing, number one for Glenn Thorne, Always a nervous time for strikers and goalkeepers. McCartney versus Dunlop. McCartney wins. 1-8. There might be a few butterflies there at this stage. 2-1 Linfield. Jameson to make it 2-2. He does. Over the years has taken a lot of spot kicks for Glen Torn. This to make it level at 3-3. Bars. 3-3. Torn is Billy Totten. The pressure growing, of course, as the penalty competition goes on. 4-3 Linfield at the moment. It's 4-4. Good kick from out of the match. Glenn Torn's John Devine. If he scores it, we continue with sudden death. If he misses it, Linfield have won. That is pressure. Divine then against Dunlop. And he makes it. 5-5, five, five. we're into sudden death. If he scores it, Glenn Torn have won. He does! Confidently sent George Dunlop the wrong way. 2-0, and they're pretty happy. As well they might be. Linfield crumbled, the Glens well on top as Dunlop misses a punch from Campbell's corner. Stephen Douglas made no mistake. Half time, 3-0. One way traffic in the second half, but we had to wait until moments from the end for number four. McCartney darts goalward with ease, his shot is blocked by Dunlop, and Douglas pots his second and seventh of the season. Linfield nil, Glentorin four. Following Johnny Jameson's corner, Barney Bars laid it back and Tommy Cleland buried the left footer. A super goal, Bars did well to set it up, and when Cleland blasted the left footer, George Dunlop had no chance. Jameson's free kick, and Kasky popped up with the header. There'll be an inquest on this goal, I would think. Kasky all on his own, and he gleefully accepted the chance. And for a long time, from John Devine's free kick, Gary McCartney controlled, swiveled, and the finish was breathtaking. Certainly a candidate for goal of the season, this one. Superb skills from Gary here, and any first division striker would be very pleased with the devastating. Jim Cleary's corner eventually headed goalward by Manley, with Alan Dornan hooking it clear, but referee Snoddy, on the line, awarded the goal. Manley's header left Dunlop and Jeffrey in a tangle, and substitute Johnny Jameson accepted the chance. Nell was bowled over by John Devine, a penalty kick. Up stepped Lindsay McKeown, he missed one last week, and Dean Smith made a fine one-handed save. 2-1 Glen Torren, they were in Europe, one all when Barney Barr scored from the spot. And a couple of minutes later it was amazingly 2-1 to the Glens, when Gary McCartney scored. And now it was all Glen Torren.
For the second time in the match, Stephen Douglas came close. But it was Gary McCartney who wrapped it up for the home side, his second and Torrance third. And now the Glens take on Coleraine in the semi-finals. Road Ferry League Cup, it started in the 12th minute. The Glens a goal up. Did Lee Doherty equalise? No, it's disallowed for offside. Well, 60 seconds later, an Ulster Cup déjà vu. A penalty with an air of controversy that surely firmly swung the match Glentoran's way. Quite a melee in the Linfield penalty area. McCartney takes a tumble. Was he tripped by Darren Coyle? Well, it's difficult to see through the mass of bodies, so make up your own mind. Referee Oliver Donnelly was well placed. He had no hesitation. Neither did Barney Bars as he confidently sent George Dunlop the wrong way. 2-0, and they're pretty happy. As well they might be. Linfield crumbled, the Glens well on top as Dunlop misses a punch from Campbell's corner. Stephen Douglas made no mistake. Half-time, 3-0. One-way traffic in the second half, but we had to wait until moments from the end for number four. McCartney darts goalward with ease. His shot is blocked by Dunlop, and Douglas pots his second and seventh of the season. Today I thought we, we were outstanding, had a lot of chances, missed a few, took a few, we ended up 4-0. I know you're very pleased with those two goals, obviously you are, because uh, you haven't been too happy with the form recently. I've had three goals in four games, but it must be six, seven games, maybe more since I scored, up until last week against Chimney Corner. Um, helped get my confidence back last week with a two strike. Another two today. All right, let's see that big two clash. No shorties of action here, and look out for a memorable goal from the Glen Torrance striker, Gary McCartney. A bumper holiday crowd saw a real Christmas cracker. Glen Torrance started briskly and scored in eight minutes. Following Johnny Jameson's corner, Barney Bars laid it back, and Tommy Cleland buried the left footer. A super goal, Bars did well to set it up, and when Cleland blasted the left footer, George Dunlop had no chance. A short time later, as Bars threw ball let in Cleland again, but this time Dunlop tipped away the shot. A sweeping move gave Linfield a chance. A strong run from Lee Doherty, the cross from Jim Grattan, but Martin McGahey couldn't find the target. Then a beautifully measured ball by Lindsay McKeown set up Grattan, but Terry Moore headed away the winger's flick. Glen Torren got their second in 37 minutes. Jameson's free kick and Kasky popped up with the header. There'll be an inquest on this goal, I would think. Kasky all on his own and he gleefully accepted the chance. Linfield tried hard to hit back. And when McKeown found Stephen Baxter, Smith had to be alert to keep out the header. Glen Torren's third was one of the best I've seen for a long time. From John Devine's free kick, Gary McCartney controlled, swiveled, and the finish was breathtaking. Certainly a candidate for goal of the season, this one. Superb skills from Gary here, and any first division striker would be very pleased with the devastating finish. Linfield started their comeback in 71 minutes. Grattan let in Baxter, and Smith parried the shot. But when the striker got the rebound, he found Grattan, and it was 3-1. Baxter's perseverance paid off here, keeping his cool at the second attempt and all credit to Grattan for a neat volley. Then Glen Torn almost had a fourth. Gary McCartney's header cleared at the post by Philip Mitchell. A minute from time, it was 3-2. Fullback Alan Dornan heading in the corner. Dean Smith not doing so well on this occasion, missed the corner and Dornan didn't miss the header. In injury time, Smith redeemed himself, getting down sharply to keep out this volley from Lee Doherty. And from the corner, Linfield almost scrambled an equaliser, but Devine cleared Doherty's header off the line. 3-2 for Glen Torn, and a great game it was. Glen Torn at four, Linfield two. And what a match that turned out to be. Your commentator is Jackie Fullerton. Jim Grattan, that's away by Devine. Linfield still have it. Bailey! Smith saves it! It's 1-0! And it's Martin Ligaki! Good play this time from Glen Torn. Devine. McCartney! Kasky. Heath. Douglas. McCartney's in now! 2-1!
Jim Grattan. Plenty of blue shirts in the middle. One of them is Kerr. McGaffey, Bailey! Good play from Cole, from Ben Torn, and here's Campbell. Oh, the chance, he gets another one. And he made no mistake that time. But here's the free kick. McCartney. Douglas jumps. Caskey. 4-2. Let's concentrate on that County Antrim Shield final, which kicks off at half past seven. The Glens have won all six big two meetings this season. Losing seven in a row would not please the Blue Men. All in all, it's been a poor season by Linfield standards. Certainly it's been a, a difficult year and uh, I suppose it's been more difficult the fact that Glen Torn have won every time we've played them this year and certainly we would very much want to, to win this one tonight. What do you think the problem has been in those six meetings? I mean, they, they, they've scored an awful lot of goals against you. I think it's difficult to say. I think credit must be given where credit's due and in some games Glen Torn have played extremely well. But there have been other games where I felt we have dominated them and uh, had them in the rack. And then they have just, as you say, have scored a goal and that seems to have, have turned the whole course of the game. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to take our chances and Glen Torn have. And uh, I think that's why they've been so successful. I suppose knowing the rivalry between the two clubs, you've had to take a tremendous amount of stick because they are very important games. Yes, it's been difficult. Um, difficult here in my own work and difficult when just in everyday life. Um, they are very, very important games and you do have to take a fair amount of stick. But um, there's going to be good days for all these bad days. And Johnny Jemison is onside as McCartney runs. McCartney has pace. McCartney for Glen Torren. Oh, this could go in. It's gone in from Gary McCartney. This is Campbell. Raymond Campbell, Stephen Douglas goes in the run, this is Campbell, can he go all the way? What a run by Raymond Campbell, Maradona-like, oh he's done it, he's done it Raymond Campbell, that was a brilliant individual goal. Roy Coyle is now gone, I suppose losing those six matches, well he admitted that had something to do with his decision to go, what's life like at the park without Coyle? Um, I suppose at the moment it's a little bit unreal, the first really taste of it was on Saturday, and uh, I don't think people really knew how to react. It was a bit strange coming to Windsor Park and him not sitting in his usual chair and not being part of the, you know, the whole Saturday setup. But I think people now have realised that um, as hard as it has been, that it's been an end of an era. Um, we've got to stand up and get on with the job at hand. And uh, it's been a, a funny and a strange period, but I think we're beginning to slowly emerge from it. Linfield lost their seventh Big Two meeting of the season last night. Glen Torren taking the Kaywoods County Antrim Shield only after 120 minutes of scoreless football. The penalty shootout went to 5 all, then Noel Bailey for Linfield. <laughs> then young Conor McCaffrey, who'd had an outstanding match for the Glens, had the chance to take the trophy back to East Belfast. <laughs> 